Today we are at the uh, Embarcadale Marina Pier on the waterfront downtown San Diego. Beautiful setting, all kinds of neat things in our background. We have just to the side of the pier the Rady Shell where the San Diego Symphony plays. We're not too far from Petco Park where the uh, San Diego Padres play. And just a ton of different restaurants and different things, Gaslight District, lots of things in this area. But we're concentrating on fishing. So the pier out here has turned out to be a great pier for bass, good pier for halibut. So a number of different species out here, both local species, more exotic species at time, and just a fun pier to be on because you can catch everything from small fish to large fish. Barkendale Marina Pier, this is a uh, bay pier, which means it's shaped much differently than most of the oceanfront piers. Most of the oceanfront piers try to be long enough to get out past the breakers, out into some deeper water. Here in the bay, that's not necessary. So this pier is only about 100 feet long. I think it's 95 feet actual long. It's 300 feet wide, so 100 feet by 300 feet. That provides some deeper water out at the end. Inshore, as you can see here, there's an area between the pier and the rocks which uh, has a lot of, uh, of uh, grass in the, in, on the bottom. And so this is a good inshore area here to catch uh, sand bass, spotted bay bass, and, and some kelp bass. So it's a good area for that. Inshore here usually is also is where you get most of the uh, perch. Rubber lip perch, pile perch, uh, not so much the surf perch, but most of the uh, deep black perch some white perch, various species like that that like the bay. Whereas out at the end, you're getting more uh, mackerel. Uh, some years, a lot of bonita. Uh, at the end is the area is actually better for the croakers, yellowfin croaker, spotfin croaker, uh, and a lot of uh, sh what I call char rays, the sharks and rays, things like uh, bat rays, round, round sting rays, thornback rays, uh, leopard sharks, um, even a few seven gill shark, not too many, but a few of those. So different fisheries, whether you're inshore here between the pier and the rock, rocky inshore, or whether you're casting out into the deeper water. Uh, typically, they, they used to say that the right end of the pier was generally better for the bass. Uh, some years they say that the left end of the pier is where you get a lot of larger, um, larger sharks and larger rays. So it varies, it depends on where they're at. But uh, it's a good pier during the day. Um, at night, again, it gets some nice shaw rays, the large sharks and rays. Um, the one thing that some people feel, well, are people hanging around? Is it safe at night? I've never had any problem, but there, there can be people hanging around at night that, that uh, make it less, less than pleasant. Um, we're right across the water, actually, from the ferry landing pier in Coronado. It's almost like a companion pier. So what we catch here is very similar to what they catch over the ferry landing pier in Coronado. Um, they do have lights, so you can fish at night. I've had some night, really nice action at night. That's when I've caught some of my largest black croaker. Uh, usually they hit better at night. That's also actually when I caught my uh, bonefish. I caught two bonefish from this pier. I've only caught three bonefish, which is more of a Baja California species, but I've caught two from this pier. So you do get some fish. It's, we're pretty close to South San Diego Bay, and South San Diego Bay has some of those Baja species. So you have a chance to get some species that you probably wouldn't get at piers farther north. But it's a good pier, not a large pier, but it's a good pier. Um, and like I said, there's a ton of events that go all around. So the, you, it's kind of nice to come out here fishing at night and being able to listen to the San Diego Symphony right over to the side of the pier. That's something you're not gonna find at too many other piers. Okay, one of the interesting fish uh, from this pier are bonefish. They're not exactly the same bonefish as you catch down in the Bahamas, the world famous, you know, fly fisherman fish of the Bahamas and Floridas and those areas, but they are a bonefish. They're a relative called the Cortez bonefish. I didn't know there was a Cortez bonefish. In fact, nobody knew there was a Cortez bonefish until a few years ago because they changed the name. But it, back about 25 years ago, I first caught bonefish at this pier. I'd gotten word from Snooky, our reporter up at the uh, Balboa Pier, that she'd caught a bonefish. And I said, what? She caught a bonefish. Those are normally a, a Baja species, warm water species. 
And then about March of that year, we had a report that a couple of bonefish had been caught here at the Embarcadero. So I thought, oh, that's cool, you know, and I knew I was going to come to the Embarcadero that summer, so maybe I can get a bonefish. Anyway, I was down here on July 1st and casting out, catching a variety of fish, some mackerel, some croakers, different things. I was using um, ghost shrimp for bait, cast out, and something hit. Gave a decent fight, not a great fight, but a decent fight. I brought it in. My God, it was a bonefish, about a 10-inch long bonefish. Not very large, but I had caught a bonefish finally, and I hadn't had to drive or fly all the way to the Bahamas. Um, Shortly thereafter, I caught an 11-inch bonefish. So for years, uh, that was my only bonefish I'd ever caught. Eventually, I caught one up at the Dana Harbor um, pier up there. Uh, same, same fish, a little bit different size. And then back about four or five years ago, the scientists got together because they knew these bonefish were being caught out here. They looked at the bonefish, and they gave this one a different scientific name and a, and a new name. Cortez bonefish. So they're more common in the Sea of Cortez down in Mexico and the warmer waters down in Baja. And, but that's why it's called a Cortez bonefish from the Sea of Cortez. Okay, I just wanted to introduce uh, one of our uh, uh, pier rats from the uh, Pier Fishing in California website. Uh, Bob Geis, known as Gypsy Boy, um, happened to be out at the pier this morning. So we grabbed him and I said, hey, we're, let's do a real quick uh, uh, interview with Bob. Um, Bob is a uh, retired policeman from uh, New York, been living in California, I guess, for about uh, six months, and uh, wants to learn about fishing in California, so he started watching our videos and uh, ordered the Pier Fishing in California book, and now here he is down at the pier. So, Bob, I imagine fishing from what you're reading is a little different than what you did in New York. The species are completely different, <laughs> okay. completely different. Uh, primarily in New York City, Long Island, we uh, go for striped bass, bluefish, and a type of halibut that we call fluke. Right. A little smaller. So in, three main. So you're not going to have fluke, but you're going to have California halibut. And striped bass, I was showing Bob, I just received a message from a friend of mine who was surf fishing down here a couple of days ago, actually, Del Mar. Who caught a striped bass? So maybe you'll catch a striped bass down here. Probably it not. Would be interesting. Probably not. But you might. You might catch one. Um, did you have a lot of piers back there in Long Island Sound? Uh, no. Um, the New York Long Island area really not a lot of piers. There's one pier in the town where I lived in. I lived in Long Beach, New York. We had a pier very much similar to this one oh. on the bay. And guys primarily go there to get fluke. Fluke, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of fluke. I've actually lived in North Carolina at one time, and we caught um, flounder down there. And so the flounder and the fluke and the halibut are all the kind of the same family, uh, different names, different areas. But uh, we're glad to have you on the Pier Fishing and, uh, you're website. Be a great source of information. So well, we hope so. I'm happy I ran into you. Well, good having you here, Bob. Right, thank, thank you. you. Not exactly what we're seeking out, a little baby sand, sand bass. You hit that thing as soon as it went under the pier. The perch will hang around the piling. Pile perch, rubber lip perch, black perch. They'll all hang around the piling and it's also the, sometimes the bass too. High tide, when it's, if it's high tide, if it's not too rough of a current, you can go inshore there and in those, where those rocks are at. You know, there's little, there's little um, indentations and, and different things between the rocks. You can drop your, your, um, your hook down, and you'd be surprised how many sometimes the fish are hanging in there. Opali, different perch, uh, sometimes even like a cabazon. Um, and they're being little small areas you don't think would even be able to hold a fish hardly, but they're snuggled in there. Um, and they're probably trying to feed on the crabs because there's a lot of crabs in those those areas by the rocks there. So just there was a pier up in Crescent City, Citizens Dock, had rocks like that, only bigger. I saw a hole in a rock, so I thought, well, what the heck? I'll drop a hook down into that hole. It looked like looked like it was a hole. I figured underneath it probably water came up, you know, through that hole. I wound up catching eight fish in that hole. 
and they were a kelp greenling, uh, rock greenling, perch, and even a cabazon in that same exact hole in about an hour's time. Kind of amazing. We ran into another viewer of the uh, uh, Pier Fishing Dot California uh, videos, and this is Marlon. He just happened to be out here at the pier, and he's looked at some of the films, I guess. Uh, Recognize number of them. this movie star right here? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> so I walked out here, and he said, oh, I've seen you in the, in the pictures. So um, he's been fishing here, and I guess you go to a lot of, several of the piers around here? Usually kayak fish around Kayak here. Fish, fishing, yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, didn't have much success today. Not today. I, not today. Yeah. It's kind of a slow day out here. But uh, uh, so you have viewed the video. What do, you, what do you think of the videos? You like the videos so far? Oh, I love them. They're, okay. they're good, great content. Good. Uh, just makes you want to get out on the water all the time. <laughs> That's what we want to do. We want to get you out on the water, hopefully educate you a few ideas, uh, make your fishing experience a little bit more fun yeah. and more productive, hopefully. Yeah. And uh, we're sure glad to see you out here. Nice and meeting you. Same here. Okay. Have a good one. I'll be around a couple of days. Maybe I'll see another pier, and uh, I'll be down this summer again. So. Hit up Crystal Pier. Oh, yeah. I may go to Crystal Pier <laughs> Sunday morning. Okay. Think about that. Yeah. Cool. Nice meeting you guys. Okay. One thing I always preach about going to the piers is have a variety of baits. This pier being inside the bay, um, you know, has certain species that are more likely to show up. And some of the baits that I found really productive here, uh, one is ghost shrimp. So you buy ghost shrimp. And that's a ghost shrimp. Now, the problem is ghost shrimp, they're long like this. Now you can keep that claw on there or you can take it off. People differ. But how do you put that on your hook? Because most hooks are kind of short like that. I use is collie hooks. There's a hook like that, which is long and curved. And so what I will do, I'll hook that right down through the back, all, and I'll kind of curve it as I'm going, and I'll hook it finally all the way up in here, up in by the head. So the hook is, when I get through, Hold still, baby. It'll be all through here. So when that casts, it's not going to fly off. Some people are always worried about it's going to fly off the hook. If you use a collie hook, something like that, it's not going to. Now, you got to be careful because the, the ghost shrimp come in different sizes. So this is a fairly decent size. That's why this is a, this is a one-aught hook because you need a longer hook because of the size of the ghost shrimp. If it was a smaller ghost shrimp, I would cut that down. I would have maybe a size four uh, collie hook or even some maybe a size six collie hook. Again, this you can you can keep on or you can some people swear by it, some just get rid of it. But that's one of the good baits and this is actually the bait that I used out here when I caught the bonefish, the two bonefish I caught out here. Another bait down here are saltwater worms. Now, I went to the store and um, I noticed this morning they had the store, I was at Squidco, they had blood worms, $14.99 a dozen, which is a little bit steep. I had bought these yesterday when I was up in Dana Point. Uh, these are lug worms. They usually run about, uh, about $7.99 a, a, a box like this. And they're very similar to blood worms, not quite as good, I don't think. And there's quite a few in a package, so it's economically it's a lot cheaper buying lugworms than it is bloodworms. Although again, I do think bloodworms are better for bait. How do you hook them? Well, basically, I just use standard <coughs> bait holder hooks for the worms, and you just take enough of the worm off to cover the size of your hook, and you stream them up right on your hook. You want a little bit hanging over. But basically, and these are size, these, this particular, these are size six hooks, which is if I'm going after perch, it's usually the size I'll use, six or size four. Uh, depends on the type of perch, what's running. Uh, but this size six is kind of a, six and four is good all around sizes. And they're also excellent for uh, bass. Bass also love worms. Um, you can go a little larger in your size hooks with the bass, obviously. 
and you can put more of the worm on there. And of course, a lot of the bass fishermen are using artificial worms, casting out, slowly reeling in. You can do the same thing with real worms, just slowly reel it in. And I, I caught a little bass a little while ago on one of these worms. So that's a second bait. Another good bait out here, of course, is, is anchovies, which is always a good bait almost for most, most species. Works for bass, works for sharks and rays. These are salted anchovies. A little harder to find. One At one time, if you went back 50 years ago, all the bait shops would carry salted anchovies. Now they all carry, most of them carry frozen anchovies, but not salted. They're going to last a lot longer on your hook. How do you use them? Well, you don't need to use a whole anchovy. Most of the time what I'll do is I will cut at an angle a piece of the anchovy from the back. And then I will hook that with two hooks. I'll go through it and then back up through it the second time and use that. Or I've even, depending on the kind of species, sometimes I'll fillet it out and you use a fillet. But you can get several, you know, if you do a diagonal cuts, one, two, three diagonal cuts and use that. Uh, or, you know, some people uh, will use a whole one if they're maybe they don't, can't get a live bait for halibut, but they want to try for halibut, and they can use a whole anchovy for that. But the salted anchovies, if you can find them, they definitely last a lot longer. You keep them in your freezer just like a frozen anchovy, but they don't get, you know, they don't get quite as hard because they're salted, but they will last almost indefinitely uh, if you keep them, you know, keep properly keep them in your, in your uh, freezer. So those are probably the three of the main you know, other people might use cut mackerel. The fish and anchovy can use cut mackerel. These are good, of course, catching mackerel. They're good for catching uh, the sharks and rays. Good for catching bass. And, of course, halibut. Halibut love anchovies. So, um, anchovies is the main fish for bait. Um, ghost shrimp, worms, different types of saltwater worms. I didn't bring any today, but you can also, if you're specifically fishing for perch, of course, uh, uh, mussels, different types of mussels, bay mussels or ocean mussels are good for, for this area also. But um, all of these will work in almost any, any pier, in, in, inner bay pier, these kind, of, these kind of baits will work pretty good. I took them. Well, I took these. I didn't take the fish. Miguel. Uh, Miguel, right? Yep. Yeah, and he's supposed to be the expert out here at the pier. So what is what do you, what is the main fish you're going after? Halibut or? Pretty much whatever that bites. Whatever bites. Right now it's mostly spotted bay bass. Okay. And then you'll get a few halibut here and there. Okay. Are you getting most of them on live bait? That what you catch them on? Mostly on plastics. On plastics, here. okay. There you go. A little swim, a little the plastics and yep. slow, With slow. The underspin has been helping this morning. Oh, okay. And um, now you said bass. What other? What are the other main fish you catch out here? Bass, halibut, corvina. Corvina, short fin corvina. Yep. Okay. And then usually a ton of mackerel, but the yeah. last two weeks no mackerel. No at mackerel. All. Yeah, and yeah. Once the anchovies disappeared, hit the South Bay, mackerel disappeared. Yeah. Too. Yeah, well, I was up at Shelter Island this morning. There was no no anchovies to be seen. There's <laughs> very few fish to be seen, actually. Uh, so you down you fish here what three four days a week? Three, four, five. Five. So you, this is like your home, home Pretty away much. from home. Yeah, I get too old to be climbing up and down rocks. <laughs> I'll do that once, twice a week. That's yeah. It. Oh, okay. Do you fish any other piers or just this one? Mostly this one. But then I'll hit Harbor Island off the rocks or yeah. Mission Bay. Mission Bay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get, catch most of your fish on artificials, yep. most of them. And when you do use bait, what's your favorite baits? Uh, the, the live bait to smelt. Smelt, okay. Mm -hmm. Live bait smelt, okay. Um, but even trying to get live smelt in the net, pretty much hard to do now. So we just yeah. use little trouble hooks with bread yeah. balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were getting some this morning at Shelter Island. That's about all they were getting was yeah. smelt, actually. Um, so what's the biggest fish you've caught out here so far? I get bat rays over 100 pounds, yeah. uh, soup fin sharks, yeah, liver sharks. Fins. If you were going to give one word of advice to newbies, 
coming out to the pier, what would be your one word of advice? Just patience. Patience, okay, that's what I always say. <laughs> that, that's one of the words I always use. Patience and practice. Always... Well, most people just come out to throw bait. Yeah. I always throw artificial bowls just to keep myself busy. Yeah. And I catch the majority of my fish on plastics. On plastics, yeah. okay. Good. Well, thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Yeah. A lot of these are Catalina. Rock grassy, usually in sandy areas, and uh, I think that's for the female. Usually the males have a, a black bar on them. They're real pretty little fish. So they give you a surprise on you know, a light rod. They give you actually a pretty good little fight. Okay, we're gonna end our day here at the Barkadale Marina Pier. Uh, we caught a few fish. We caught a little baby bass and a smelt and. Hook something large that took our bait into the into the pilings where it rubbed against the uh, mussels and actually broke the line. But something big, either a, probably a bat ray, maybe a big bass, probably a bat ray. But uh, it's been fun. Met some interesting people. Talked to an expert out here, and uh, talked to the uh, people who make some good food out here. And hopefully, you got a chance in this film to see a little bit of what the surroundings look like. Uh, beautiful, just a lot of interesting things out here. It's a beautiful spot on the bay. So we recommend you come down here to the Embarcadale. At least try coming down here to the Embarcadale Marina Pier and give it a shot and see what you think. And I think if you do, you'll, be, you'll come back because it's a fun place to come. So again, the Embarcadale Marina Pier is part of the Embarcadero Marina South Park. So just uh, follow the road to the end and it'll bring you to the pier. We also want to add, be sure to subscribe to our uh, YouTube videos, Pier Fishing in California YouTube videos. The subscription uh, makes a little bit of money and hopefully gives us a little bit of money to uh, pay for these films. So subscribe and watch Pier Fishing in California, the videos, the video, uh, YouTube video. Thank you. So that calls it a day. We're going to... Uh, the, we're going to call it a day here at the Marina Embarkation. <laughs>